Today, I'm back over at Tortuga, my 1936 wooden powerboat, and I'm going to start prepping the hull for the new plank ends that are going to go in. Yesterday, I came over and used my wood chisel to remove a little bit of rot from the stem underneath the planking, and then filled the gap, which wasn't very big, less than an eighth of an inch, with uh, thickened epoxy rather than putting in a graving piece. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Today, I'm going to lay out the planks so that I know what the widths are of the planks at the forward end. I can measure the existing planks to get the aft end. And I'm also going to start cutting the scarfs into the existing planks. Okay, let's get going. All right, there she is, ready to go. And the first thing I'm going to do is lay out where the forward ends of the existing planks would extend to so that I can get dimensions for the replacement planks. And to do that, what I've done is I brought my laser level. I'm just going to come in here and line it up on the plank seam and see where it ends. And I've already done, marked it, so here's a mark here for the bottom plank, the middle plank, goes right to here where I put a mark in. So these are the dimensions for the forward ends of the planks. And using a laser level lets me get a good straight line across. I line it up with the plank seam. The next step is to lay out where I want the end of my scarf to be, and then I'm going to start prepping the wood to actually cut the scarf in. Because I don't want to remove these fasteners here, that's going to limit how wide my scarf can be. And it's, the biggest limitation is here at the top. I've got just under five inches, and down here at the bottom, I've got five and three quarter inches. So I can go with a four and a half inch wide scarf. So I can come over here, four and a half inches, and put a mark. Here, four and a half. Here, four and a half. Now I'll get myself a batten for straight edge and draw that in, and that will be the end of the scarf. At this point, I'm just about ready to start cutting my scarf in. And what I'm going to do is cut a series of vertical grooves to the depth of the scarf at that point. I'm going to cut three of them in here. I've gone one quarter, half, and three quarters of the width. So that at this point, assuming my planking is seven eighths of an inch thick, if I cut a groove seven sixteenths of an inch deep here, that should just touch the scarf surface. If I cut one seven thirty seconds of an inch, just under a quarter here, that will just touch the scarf surface. And if I cut one twenty one thirty seconds, just a little bit under three quarters, it will also touch the scarf surface. So I'm going to set up and start making some of those cuts with the oscillating saw. This is my oscillating saw. It's a Porter cable. It's turned out to be a good, durable tool. I've had it for quite a few years. And I'm quite pleased with it. Turn this a little. So uh, overall, it's uh, been a good investment. It was quite a bit cheaper than the original oscillating saws, the fines. But it does the job, and as I said, it's very durable. So let's start making our cuts. deep I've gotten. There. Get back in. Good reference. Full depth there. Pull it out. And right now, I am right at a quarter inch on that one. So I have about three sixteenths of an inch to go. And there's my reference up there that I'm shooting for. Okay, 
first groove is done, 7 16ths of an inch thick, plus or minus maybe a 32nd. This one is just under a quarter inch, so uh, we'll get going. pretty much finishes two out of three. Now this is the deep one. It's going to be just a little under three quarters of an inch, so, but it won't take long. Well, that does that. So the next step is to start removing wood. I'm going to start in the middle plank and what I'm going to do initially is I'm just going to take the uh, oscillating saw and cut this way using the bottom of the grooves to indicate if I've cut too much. first segment's done. Once I get all these cut out, I will go back and I will go over this with my hand plane to clean up the scarf surface. Okay, that first bit's out. I can pop it out. to get a pry bar to do that. As I remove each piece here, as I remove each piece, I end up with the scarf surface showing, and that gives me a guide for the saw for cutting the next piece. Last little bit of the scarf is still a little thick, so I can see here that it, I have to, you can still see the groove there. The grooves are gone here, so I have to deepen that out a little bit. Cut myself just now, so I'm going to have to take a break while I go bandage up. Okay, before I nicked myself, I noticed that I hadn't quite bottomed this groove out with the scarf that I cut in, and I still have about it eighth inch of wood there, so I'm going to try to deepen the scarf just a little bit. So a little more cutting and that one will be finished. about 10 12 minutes but the first scarf is cut and that surface is smooth enough that although I can hand plane it a little just to make sure it's make it a little more even it isn't really necessary because when you're doing a scarf joint like this you don't want it too smooth I've got a nice feather edge there no more than a 32nd of an inch thick at the most 
down here. Take a little tiny bit more off there. There we go. One scarf joint ready to go. Now what I have to do is when I get my planking stock ready, I will lay out a matching scarf joint on the planking stock and cut it out. Then I can just put the two pieces of wood together. I'll put a few screws through about here to hold the scarf together and screw it to the frame and the stem. Once the epoxy cures here, the new plank ant and this piece and the remaining plank will essentially become one piece. So I will have continuous plank right up to the end. And that is much, much stronger than a butt block, particularly since the epoxy is stronger than the wood. So if this ever was to fail, it would fail on the wood adjacent to the epoxy joint. The epoxy joint will not fail before the wood does. Tortuga is planked with Douglas fir. And the planking here is original from 1936. And from the ring count on that wood, which is oh, 25 or so, I can tell that this is most likely old growth Douglas fir, which here on the east coast of the United States, you simply cannot get. If I was out west, I might be able to get some, but here, not a chance. So I'd like to retain as much of this old sound wood as I can, because this is really high quality wood. It took 81 years for it to rot out. Okay, I'm not going to, I'll cut the rest of these other two. I'm not going to film them because it's a little repetitive. But we'll have, you'll, you'll see the procedure. It's pretty straightforward and goes pretty quickly. So, I'm going to finish that today except for coming back at the end when I have all three scarfs cut. Okay, all three scarfs are cut. And as soon as I get some wood, I'll be putting planks in. Uh, I probably won't be getting wood for a few days because it's a pretty big trip to the lumber yard. And in the meantime, I'm going to paint that frame and also paint the stem on the fanging surface there so that the, to protect it a little bit against future uh, water incursion. So that took about 40 minutes and definitely was not that bad using the oscillating saw to cut the scarves in a hand plane to clean them up just a little bit. So all three scarfs are in. They're a little bit more than five to one scarfs, which is a little less than uh, the recommended seven to one, but I don't think it'll make much difference. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it.